two, one, and we are live on the Baseballogist Show, the Baseballogist, and... What up, dude? It's Ryan. How's it going? Ryan Juarez. What's up, man? How are you doing? Chilling, dude. I am still buzzing off of yesterday, man. It was a crazy day. <sighs> okay. Talk to us. What was the event we went to yesterday on November... What was it? November 14th. 14th, Saturday. Uh, what, where do we go? So we went to the BBG All-Star Game. BBG stands for Baseball Generations. And it's uh, basically an organization. Um, it's not a travel ball team. It's not necessarily a showcase organization. It's literally just a group of guys that try to get better. And it's led by Dominic Smith and J.P. Crawford are the headliners for the uh, major leaguers that they got over there. They have quite a few of them. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Really exciting. And, you know, this just happened yesterday and, and we're really excited to talk about it. Ryan and I actually haven't talked this morning and we want, you know, we wanted to talk about it right when I called him before this podcast. But I said, hey, Ryan, any questions you got? Well, let's just press record, talk about it, <laughs> recap and give different perspectives. Actually, you know, Ryan's usually behind the cameras when it comes to uh, documenting things. But it was actually a cool perspective just because Ryan was actually working um, as sideline media. Mm -hmm. um, covering the whole event. So if you guys watched it last night, that's because of Ryan, uh, Adonis, yeah. and Benji, the whole squad, um, yeah. showcasing the ins and outs of, um, of yesterday. Yeah, man. It was a crazy event. And it's kind of crazy, especially in the time that we're in right now, that we saw something so well organized. Um, you know, obviously, it was scaled back because of uh, COVID. But it was still a good turnout as far as the players we got there. Um, and man, the talent was impressive, man. Oof. Be before we talk about the talent, I, I got to give a shout out to the sideline media because hey, that, that is Ryan, Adonis, Benji, and also uh, Ryan as well. The other, yeah, the other, yeah, other ride. Yeah, yep, so, absolutely. So the, the, the reason why I'm there, I got to give these guys a shout out just because, um, you know, for me, baseball and media is such a, it, I love it, right? Mm -hmm. Social media, just exposing whether it's players, events, and... <laughs> In between, so what's Ryan's last name? Other one? Uh, I actually don't know. Okay. I only know him That's as right. Ryan. That's right. <laughs> what's yeah. awesome is in between every inning, all you hear is, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my, what the? What's going on? What is this? And then it just Ryan just, <laughs> just yeah. got a drone. I'm like, light is wow. drone. So it's crazy, man. These guys, cover, how many cameras do you guys have? Like five, six? Uh, yeah, we did. But for the game, we kind of just kept it to two. Because uh, honestly, for a baseball game, the, the main thing is you just want to see the action, right? So the, we had the main view going on to see the pitch and the batter. So you got the, you know, the duel. And then I would follow everybody when they did something. So if a, gall, a ball got put in play, I would go out and I would uh, – I would, you know, follow the ball, see how the play went. And it was fun, man. It was kind of the first time we really went for a full game like that, like full yeah. production. We did graphics. We did a scoreboard. Everything was like we tried. I don't think it's final form. We're definitely getting better. But, man, it was fun, dude. And we got to integrate you, which is honestly one of my favorite parts Thanks. of it. Dude, Super we did a sideline interview with you, man. Oh, I, I didn't, okay, I don't even know to start. Okay, yeah. so bear with me. All right, I know there's a lot of excitement. We're like, I, I kid you not, guys. We're like little girls talking about this stuff. I'm it, buzzing, dude. I'm buzzing. Okay, so Crazy. it was, all right, so so for the people that don't know, that didn't follow, you know, whether Instagram or anything or even were on the live, mm -hmm. the, a BBG All-Star event slash um, Home and Derby yep. was an event thrown for the top 40 2022 or a class of 2022 2023 however okay. there was about there's one freshman which is 2024 20, and then there's like one or two seniors i know yeah. one for sure yeah, yeah yeah and it's the top 40 of those classes mostly from california but there was a lot from out of state a lot right? man a lot if i look through the list again i think there was easily let me see one two three four five six seven, oh man yeah like 10 guys uh from out yeah. of state yep so little less than half i mean yeah a little less than half but that's a lot yeah uh, during this time of uh you know during covid era it wasn't open to the public it was mostly mm -hmm. open to family and friends but limited yeah. Yeah, i would say there's maybe less than 130 yeah. people 120 people in the stands all separate yeah. all separate yeah um but yeah it was all these guys um they showed up uh, they probably showed up, you know, a day or two prior, wherever they're from. 
Um, they showed up, they did BP, then they did media, you know, anything like, you know, uh, from pictures to all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they had a home and derby, which I believe there's what, six, six, eight kids. Uh, what was it? No, it was actually, it was, so it was kind of a different structure. They did yeah. it. I think it was 10 kids Okay. and, um, the top three moved on to the finals and there was a, it was, so it, was, it wasn't like a, you know, continuous round. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, can you make the finals or not? They took the yeah, top yeah. three. So yeah. it was a home and derby and then there was a nine inning game, um, led by the coaches, Dominic Smith, first baseman yep. from the, the New York Mets and yep. also shorts. And then the other team, which is team Crawford led by JP Crawford shortstop from the Seattle Mariners, gold Glover, 2020. Freshly, freshly super, anointed super gold Glover. <laughs> How um, crazy. So that was a format and it was cool because like uh, there was the, the phenom, you know, the, the young wave or the young talent coming in and then there's the professional coaches. Then there were some, there were some uh, familiar faces in the, in the, in the stands or not in the stands in the, on the field, Jack Flaherty from St. Louis Cardinals came out really oh, yeah. cool. I saw him talking to, um, I didn't get to, uh, to, I actually said what up to him, but I didn't get to talk to him just because when it comes to that, I like pros talking to the, uh, the kids more. Yeah. yeah. I was in the outfield Absolutely. with Jack and he was showing, uh, one of my guys, um, you know, just whatever pitching stuff, like nerdy stuff. Oh, like, hey. oh that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I got to participate in that part yeah. of it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, there's so also, cool. um, there's also shortstop for the Marlins. Jazz Chisholm home. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He was a uh, first base coach for Dominic Smith. It was really cool. Um, then there's a lot of minor league players. There were a uh, big time, you know, there was agencies there. There were brands there. Um, I know Marucci sp- helped sponsor um, mm-hmm. Marucci Chandler, uh, 44, uh, Mar- Marcus Stroman's brand um, height doesn't measure heart H D M H. All right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You just, you, you I, I didn't know there. that brand. No, you I didn't know that. I didn't know that was Stroman's. Yeah. You didn't know that. You don't know that brand? No, dude. Heart I'm a, I'm doesn't a... measure height. I'm sorry. Oh. Height doesn't measure heart. There you go. H D heart height doesn't measure. Yeah. H D M H M H. That's yeah. his brand. Oh, and um, I saw it. Um, his logo was um, it was on their pants. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, like, yeah. The they belt, had batting gloves too. The belt buckle loop. They did. Um, yeah, I got a good look at those. Those were pretty cool. So it was cool. Uh, what else? Who, who else was there? Uh, BBG, obviously. Um, yeah. And then if I'm missing something, you know, but it was really yeah. well ran um, by Tim and uh, Ron. Yeah, Tim and Ron, Tim Rivera, Ron, uh, yeah, Ron's, what's Ron's last name, Smith? Yeah. Yeah. Ron, so, great guys, man. Great guys and a really cool organization. And we had such a blast covering it. So I can't wait yeah. to talk more about it. So it was ran by them. And then obviously Ryan and, and the crew, Adonis and uh, Benji and uh, another Ryan is they, they, they did sideline media or sideline media covered it. And what they did is basically they took a lot of pictures, took a lot of videos, but most importantly, they made it live online for everyone to see. And it was great, great footage. And to make it even more personal, um, you know, Sideline Media invited me and, and it actually connected me with BBG. Um, and I even got to interview some cool people during, during yeah, that man. time, uh, which we, we will get into. But um, yeah, man. Start it off. What What are your thoughts? Uh, just you know, obviously we'll talk about it. But what are your thoughts? It's in the morning. I know you did some work yep. this morning. You yep. freaking were on a, a a high yesterday just because yeah. of how exciting it was. Talk to me, man. So excited. So, well, first of all, the event itself I think is super unique. If something like this exists somewhere else, I just I'm not aware of it. It's really amazing. You know, when you hear about, you know, big leaguers giving back, you know, giving back to the community, you know, your community base, I think that actually means you have to show up in person and they didn't just show up in person. Like this is dedicated to putting shine on kids completely committed kids. There were committed kids, everybody there had an opportunity to show out, not only show out to like scouts and coaches and stuff, but like, just to be involved with something with that they're trying to get to the big leaguers, man. And like, it was one of the most like humbling experiences I've ever seen because to me, this is just a, 
the real meat and bones of what community means. So especially, you know, these guys, Dominic Smith, J.B. Crawford, Jazz, they, they were on the field the whole game, talking crap with the kids, giving them pointers, you know, just really making it feel like an inclusive thing. So I give them tons of props for that because they don't have to do this, dude, especially, especially this year, how many events got canceled, but like they made it happen. They got a field, a really nice field too. Uh, that was a Sam and Will stadium and yep. San Bernardino. Um, so first of all, that was awesome. And the second portion of it is I love that these kids are willing to actually show out so yeah, much personality yeah. on the field. They, everybody was talking the whole time. Like, and like, it felt like I heard jazz say this. He's like, dude, this feels like rec ball. And it, but like rec, rec ball in the fun way, like it's friends hanging out. You can hear people talking crap from the outfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually getting after it. And these kids were super talented. So oh, on the highest level, that was my big takeaway. What about you, man? Whew. Um, I mean, rec ball, I, I feel like is an understatement, you know? Yeah, like, I, I, I felt just like, made it like uh, it was inclusive, you know? I, no, I, I know what you mean, but just the level of talent. Oh, my god! I, I can't say rec ball, you know what I mean? Because, oh, no, no, that's such an understatement on that. And, and I don't want to yeah. say it was like an all-star game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> it, was it, was, it was. Oh man, how do I word this? It was definitely something I don't see often because when you do go to a high school game and you see these top prospects, they stand mm -hmm. out. You know, they stand out. They go one for three, two for three. They mm -hmm. pitch a gem, whatever. You're like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. But. When you say, oh, this guy is going to, you know, this guy's committed to so-and-so, mm -hmm. he's top so-and-so in the nation, oh, versus the number one, you know, shortstop in the nation, you're like, wait, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like, this is nuts. Scout's dreams. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and not only was nuts. it nuts, nuts, it could be, oh, this could be your, you know, your superstar in the MLB versus the next Cy Young winner in the MLB. Like that to me blows my mind is these. It, All right. I think, games are I think right now I got to break down some of these kids, man. Some of these, so we can give the audience an idea of who we're talking about. So if we look at the, like the, who is supposed to be the headlining players, uh, the top player there was Andrew Jones Jr. That's the most like highly rated player as far as like, you know, rankings go. So yeah. Andrew Jones Jr. is the son of Andrew Jones. First of all, that's crazy. And he is hold the on, number three on, ranked player. On. We can't say it like that because there's a lot of youngins on this. If oh, I gotta right, stress huh? this, Andrew Jones is a legendary player in MLB, legendary. specifically for the Atlanta Braves. He was your outfielder. Center if fielder. People, center fielder. If people don't know, he was in the era of Chipper Jones. Mm -hmm. It was always like the Jones, you know, they're, they're not related, but it was like the Joneses, you know? Mm -hmm. Andrew Jones was a stud. Um, yeah, all-star yeah, player. So he, he was on the team. He, Andrew Jones was part of the, the 90s Braves. So Chipper Jones, uh, Tom Glavin, uh, Greg Maddox, John right. Smoltz. Smoltz. Yeah, so crazy, crazy. 17-year yeah, uh, big leaguer with 10 consecutive gold gloves ridiculous <laughs> okay so we got to watch his sudden play and and he ended up winning the home run derby fitting like oh my goodness so that was that was the top player there uh another player there that was a big one Tremar Johnson number one ranked shortstop in the nation not committed to his school yet so that was like a little fun one to watch I'm I even got to talk junior. to him a little bit about it yep. yeah um and so yeah so I mean like the list goes on and on as far as committeds go so, like four Vanderbilt commits UCLA commits Arizona commits um TCU Florida State Stanford so we're talking about legit legit players here so these are not your average like hey we're at a normal showcase i want to get seen these kids have already been seen we're gathering top end talent and typically at showcases you don't see these kids because they already proven their worth yeah. like this is like a very special event because typically only like pro scouts get to see stuff like this because it they're like now contending to be drafted so they want to like show the pro specifically but dude, this was just for fun. Like this was just to have a good time. It, and it, just was, to show it was a scout ball game. Yeah, it was, was awesome. a, it was legit a scout ball game. Like all like of the 40 kids that were there um, in the next two years, easily half of them are going to be drafted. So there you go. I mean, that's, that's the town we're talking about. So yeah, go ahead. I, I, I just wanted to let the audience know how high I got to say something that you and I said, 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know how it made sense, but you and I were like on the same wave. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know how when, when people say, oh, this guy's, this guy's big league and oh, this guy's such, oh, yeah, yeah. This guy's such a big leaguer and, and they're not in the pros yet, right? Uh-huh. And people say that in a way where it's like, it's, a, it's such a negative connotation, right? Mm-hmm. We're always big, big league. Somebody's bad. Right? It's bad, right? But mm-hmm. <laughs> Ron and I were like, bro, these guys have like that big league mentality, but not like in a bad way, but like in a, like a really good positive way. And then we just kind of like, we kind of like depict it to where like, I know what you mean. And for you yeah. guys who don't know what we mean, Remember, these kids are mostly sophomores and juniors, meaning 15, 16, and or 17, meaning they are not in the big leagues, but they have that mentality like they are in the big leagues, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then they carry themselves at such, like, with, like, such presence. Yeah. I, I mean, I could not believe that these kids were 16, 17 years old yeah. because I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not going to already see you 10 years from now as a fully developed man being exactly the same <laughs> dude you are right now it's just nature has to take its course your personality is already there yeah so that was one of the coolest parts for me um but yeah man That's something that yeah. um, go ahead go ahead share that i can't wait to post you don't know this is i had free reign or free range to do anything i wanted on the field which is my, my dream nice. thing right Go yeah. on the field, um, be on the f- go on the field, you know, be on the field, anything I want. And then I, I want to do interviews with these kids, right? And you know some of my questions. I'm not going to say- I- I- I tell you guys the questions here. You guys have to check out the YouTube that I'm going to do. So if you guys don't follow youtube.com forward slash the baseball, just I did interviews and I was like, I don't want to do it on the field just because like, I don't feel like I get personal because w- there's music. They're, yeah, yeah. they're, they're, they're going crazy. Cause they're excited to see each other. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get nitty and gritty. So I went down all the way to the, the clubhouse. Oh, nice. Where they're, nice. Where they're taking pictures and I was like, screw it. Let's do it here. <laughs> you know, so, uh, the first, I didn't even get to see the clubhouse scene. So it was cool. Down there? Oh yeah. So they had the club. It was, they all shared one clubhouse. It was big enough for all 40. Okay. And, um, Chris, one of the photographers set up a, a white backdrop with lights for the, uh, for headshots nice and then um i went down there it's really cool and then i was like i'm just gonna stay down here and, and perfect time to get some some interviews so the first person i saw um pretty sure his name his name is daniel curiel oh curiel yeah Derek. Derek yeah. curiel yeah Derek, young, that's, that's, my boy that's the freshman right that's the youngest one there. Derek curiel from west covina oh right yep 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 i got the list right here boy mm-hmm. so i saw him he was so excited to see me and I was like, Derek, trying to do that interview? He's like, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Any, anywhere, any, anywhere you want. He's super nervous. I was like, Derek, let's do it right here. He's like, right here? I was like, yeah, I don't care. Let's do it right here, right on the sofa. And we did it. Yeah, yeah. You know, first off, Daniel was a, Daniel, Derek, Derek. Derek was such a, like, he's a kid. He's, yeah. he's the only the literal youngest kid so there, for yeah. People who know um, Derek, he's the number one 2024. Mm-hmm. Ranked number one uh, freshman in all the nation. The whole thing. He's an outfielder <laughs> and a lefty hitter. I'm sorry. Oh. No, he, no, I'm sorry. He's a lefty lefty. Sorry. Lefty, He's a lefty lefty. lefty. And I got to interview him. It was really cool. Really cool kid. Very humble. And um, just was very aware. When I say you're very aware, like you just know where you're at. You know what you're about. You know what you can bring to the table. He was big league, if that makes yeah. any positive. Yeah, way. yeah, absolutely. He was only, I was like, how old are you? He's like, I just turned 15. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You just turned, like, just say you're 15, you know what I mean? But for you to say, just turned 15, you're a young stud, man. So you're like, you're like 14, basically. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how many I, I interviewed. I probably interviewed maybe close to 10, 10 12 kids. Wow. Um, really cool got to ask questions you guys know me i don't really want to give you those those typical media espn type of questions i like to really get personal and even questions i care for you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but the reason why i mention that is because we're talking about big league and 
Mm. I'm actually, I'm asking these questions and these kids are like, give me, you watch basketball, right? You yeah. know how LeBron James, how he gives very professional, smooth answers. Yep. Yep. He's not matter. overthinking, but he's doesn't got that. Doesn't think like- it, doesn't overthink, <laughs> just, yeah, I, 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 see, I'm studying right now. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know what answer, I, I don't want to give up my answers or other questions, but like these kids were giving LeBron answers. I'm like, what the f- <laughs> bro chill out like i'm trying to give you questions to kind of get loose and you're giving me like yeah. full on like as if i told them told them the questions a day before they're, yeah. they're so prepared um, <laughs> like they got the script already yeah exactly oh um i mean i, I gotta call, i gotta put one guy on blast dude the dude is amazing man um justin best uh, right justin best Oh, best. Yeah. yeah super best was awesome, talented. man. Yep. One, one of the best personalities there. Um, he gave me these professional answers. I was like, bro, you got to chill out, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, loosen up. But it was just how proper, how um, professional, and how, um, you know, his demeanor, you know. And, and uh, what's a really yeah. awesome quick story about best and the best family is I was uh, hanging out by third base dugout. And then um, this gentleman was like, baseballologist? I was like, yes, sir. And I don't, I, I don't know him, you know? And he's like, hey, um, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a Justin's father, uh, you know? And then I was like, oh, yeah. you're best. He's like, yes, yes, sir. Um, my boy is so excited to meet you. I was like, no way. I was excited to meet him. Yes, <laughs> I met his whole family there from Charlotte. Uh, yeah. one, uh, his uncle is from Long Beach. Oh. And, and it was just really cool to kind of see the support uh, of a, a kid, you know, from the other side of the country. Yeah. Um, but and I, by oh, the way, Justin Best, number six outfielder in the nation, committed to FSU. E- that, so here we go, dude. Like, yeah, that's my crazy. boy, Justin. And every time I saw Justin, he always gave me a smile. He has braces. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> my, my man. Boy, <laughs> Justin, shout out the best family. Yeah. Um, and it was really cool. And I told the, uh, the parents, I told the, the families, like, hey, he's a really cool dude, uh, well mannered kid. Just, I want to let you guys know. Um, I definitely like him. And then I said, Hey, but I did tell him when we took a picture, I was like, never, let's not, let's not stand up because this dude is like six, three or whatever. Oh my, the heck he's, my goodness. I was like, yeah, but you better sit down, man. I'll, I'll stand up. <laughs> to How tall is he? You have a stats? Uh, six, yeah. Six, three, one ninety. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. So, this, this is like a scout's dream. Like the amount of projectable bodies that were there, like the amount of guys that were long, lanky frames. Cause when you say projectable, it kind of means a certain thing. It means you're tall and skinny. So you got the God given ability of height. And if you're skinny, that means you could put weight on. So if you're shoving out hitting bombs all over the field, like they were during the home run derby, uh, that means you're only going to get stronger and you're only yeah. going to get faster. And you're did only you, going to get more. I know more. you're, you're recording him, but did you get to watch him in the home run derby? Oh yeah, dude. It was crazy. It, it, it was the, the whip. It was unreal. It, it was crazy because at first, you know, first off, it was for lefties. It was tough to hit it over. You have a freaking green monster there. There was. And yeah, Justin was just trying so hard. He was hooking him. He was barely, he was hitting the wall, you yeah, know. Yeah, that sucks. And I was yeah, like, come on. you hit it far enough. It just then had to be at a little bit better angle. Yeah. And then he probably got down to the last minute or so, and he knocked out maybe three or four or five, you know? And I know those oh. kids, you know, whether they don't win or not, I know they at least want to put one out. You know what I mean? Like, you can't it, go over. You don't want to at least. Yeah, so you feel it, like you failed. Yeah. Thing. You don't, who cares if you don't win it? You just want to say, at least you put it out. And mm-hmm. he got in this groove, and he's got a really nice, like, how do, what's a word? What's a word? I want, to, I want to create another word for a swing. Okay. He's got like a really springy swing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like it was coiled up and then bang. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, yeah. and his finish just. And yeah. he, his bat just slings like this. Uh, again, it's like, it's like springy. But uh, he got probably about three to four out. And, you know, a, a, as a family, I'm sure they're really pr- proud of him regardless. But they're really yeah. proud of him uh, for showing up. And uh, it was yeah, really cool. Man. So, but man, there's so much going on. Um, I guess All right, so let's talk about that home run derby while we're at it, dude. What, what were your impressions for the home run derby? Because that was, that was kind of what I was looking forward to the most because we got to really watch. Like, during a game, an event may or may not happen. A kid could walk, and you didn't really get to see him. But the home run derby, we got a good look at these dudes. So, okay, so I want to be honest. I, Ryan probably knows these names more than I do because that, this is Ryan's, like, you know, angle, and he really loves – 
um, prospecting the next prospects or the next names. So I kind of came at this knowing what I could. Yeah, as yeah we briefed, yeah. Um, the names I did that I were kind of like um, – that I was familiar with were, of course, Drew Jones, Drew Jones mm. Jr. Um, what's the what's the kid's name with the long hair? He actually won it last year. Oh, uh, Lena, Dylan Lena. Lena. Dylan yeah. Lena, third baseman. Cool kid, man. Uh, really very cool, cool kid. kid. I actually, I wish I, I, I interviewed him. I, I From what I hear, he's got a really bright, um, charismatic personality, which yeah. – I, I, I truly like you. So, you know, hopefully in the future, maybe we get him on this podcast. Let's get it. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's get it. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know. Um, it's fun though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so him, Drew Jones, um, Jaden was, uh, Yeah, new. there was Malcolm Moore, uh, who were the, the other one. Kid that kept on slashing him. I was going to say, I, I was going to wait. That was my favorite kid in the whole render. Malcolm Moore. Malcolm Moore. Okay. So Malcolm Moore, he is a 6-1-205 catcher out of Sacramento, committed to Stanford, number one catcher in the nation. And oh my God, he hits nukes. He had that golf ball hit. You know what I mean? Like when you hit a golf ball and it does that whole like, and it just kind of accelerates to the apex. That's what he was doing the balls nonstop. And I feel kind of bad because the way the format was set up, it was a timed one. So I think it was like two minute rounds. Great. So in two minute, three minute rounds. So dude, if you're swinging a bat for three straight minutes, that's like essentially sprinting. You know, if he had time to kind of like, like take breaths in between swings, we would have seen 15 more home runs because literally the only thing that got him out of rhythm is he was kind of running out of gas. Yeah. But my God, he hit bombs all over the place. And his swing is so nice, dude. Okay. Oh, my goodness. All right. my, that was my favorite guy. Different perspective. Ready for this? So I was watching the Home Run Derby from, the, from, uh -huh. uh, from behind. It was really cool. It was really awesome to see the balls jump. But mm -hmm. I wanted something else. Did you see what I did? What'd you, oh, I, you went out there. <laughs> I saw you and left. <laughs> yeah. So what were you doing? I was, I was like, what are you up to over there? So, um. In in the outfield, left field, there was uh, about four players. Let me see how you remember their name. Um, Dylan, Cole, and someone else. Sorry, man. But, oh, weren't you with the uh, you were with the Spain? That's Dylan. Dylan and Cole. Uh, I couldn't really see. Was it Horn? Probably. And then David another Horn? another another pitcher. I I couldn't really tell. Cole Stokes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cole Stokes. Yeah, it was all pitchers out there. Cole Stokes, and then <laughs> one more kid. I forgot. Sorry, brother. Yeah. But um, yeah. they're hanging out with Jack Flaherty. Oh. And I was like, you know, I, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not a, I don't like budging in people's conversations. I just don't. I just think like, you know, let let them be. You know, so I just let them be. They're Absolutely. they're in left field, and I was like, you know what? Like, one of my bucket lists is to I don't know why is to catch or to be or to shag in a home run derby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're not working on anything. They're just trying to jack them out. Yeah. And so I brought out um, AJ, one of the uh, guys behind the cameras. I was like, dude, let's go out there. He's like, are you going to protect me? I was like, bro, I got you. <laughs> so le le let me tell you guys, man, I was in left field and the sun is beaming straight above the field. So, oh, so you couldn't see. You couldn't see. So I, I had to uh, borrow Donis' glasses. Oh. But um, it was awesome because – First off, I didn't miss one. Let's nice. get it, baby. And, and I told AJ, I was like, hey, I, I gave him a little breakdown. I was like, you know, the skill in this is since it's going in the sun, you're blinded. So the <laughs> I'm giving you guys a lesson right now. So in order to catch a pop fly or a fly ball or a line drive that goes in the sun, you basically see the ball of the bat. You cover the sun with your glove. Correct. Right. And as the ball is passing the sun and your glove, obviously you're not going to see it for two seconds. Mm -hmm. So you have to read it off the bat, the angle, the, the, uh, the, uh, the strength of the, of the ball or the ball. Of the bat. Mm -hmm. And then the skill is to wait for the ball to come out of the sun and, or your glove. Oh, yep. Absolutely. So I just felt like a boss. I was like, waiting on it. Oh, here it is. Boom. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still and, got it. Still yes, got it. I still got it, man. And it it, awesome. it was awesome because I, I I don't know. I caught maybe like maybe six to ten balls. Um, I even I did I even caught some uh on the run. Oh, make it block in the sun. Let's go. <laughs> Still got it. Right here. It's like this. I know you got a little sun action going on. <laughs> um, so it was really fun. Um, I don't know what's the point. Oh yeah. So the reason why I say that I stated this is I wanted to go out there not only to shag and to catch fly balls, but I want to see the uh, trajectory of the balls off the mm-hmm. bat. And from a righty. Like it's either like, Oh, it's either short or it's gone. Yeah. yeah. When I saw, was it Malcolm Moore? Yes. And he, he's a lefty, right? Lefty. And again, let me remind you, there was a, how, how tall was that wall in right field? Uh, I'd say at least 20, 25 feet. It wasn't 20, quite like green monster, but it yeah, was, it was no more than 30. Yeah. His balls were fl- jumping off his back. Yeah, and it wasn't oh, the home runs where, oh, they, no, that's short. No, mm-hmm. it's either he got it or he missed it. Yeah, exactly. Like dude. some kids were, were muscling it. We're like, oh, it's a chance and it's short. No, mm-hmm. he was golfing it. There it is. That's a perfect word, golfing it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And they were using metal. I don't know why they didn't use wood. They're, they're cracking it better with wood earlier and then oh yeah he, dude some of these guys i mean that's another sign that how developed they are like when you yeah. can actually hit better with wood and you're feeling more yeah. comfortable there yeah you're gonna be a pro dude so they're right. using uh they're using metal or bb core um but he was he was launching balls and yeah i mean that was your favorite um then probably after his round i i started going towards the the dugout and i was actually with uh, uh drew jones jr oh nice and nice. This is when Malcolm was hitting, and it was, it was either he wins it or loses it while Drew was waiting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Drew, how do you feel? He's like, bro, this is my, uh, my uh, arch nemesis. So, you know, just out, out of play, you know. He's like, bro, this guy, this guy's barely, you know, this is what Drew said. This guy barely swings it, man. He mm-hmm. barely swings, and look what he's doing. And then, yeah. of course, I'll be posting him. I'll be posting a big video for him. Oh, I got, yeah. I'm already working on one for um, for Drew right now. It'll be posted later today. And you know, it's just like you know, it was him in his final round, but he didn't know he was going to win it because he went first. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Malcolm, dude, that swing is unreal, man, unreal. And he's like a thick, strong guy too. So to see that, you know, he's not muscling it, but he has muscle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, um, Andrew Jones has a really solid, like compact, strong swing and he's a big dude. He's probably what? Six, two. Yeah. How tall is he? Oh, uh, no, dude. I think he's even taller. Uh, six, three, according to the bio. But when I was looking at him, dude, I was six, like, three and he growing. Might have grown since the last time. Yeah. Six, three and growing. Yeah. Um, got a very athletic body, but he was he he put a lot out. I, I think in one round he hit what eleven. I know he yeah. hit seven the yeah, first yeah. round. Then he put it up. He put he yeah. took up the next round, and he was going. Um, it was really exciting. These these kids are these kids are sixteen. You know, and and it's really yep. exciting these guys uh, for these guys to put it out. Not only one or two, but multiple. Um, really yep. exciting. So. I can't yeah, and then shout out to Newt too, Jaden Newt. He was the third finalist, and he put on a show as well, man. I mean, like all three of those guys, I le- I legit think they will all be top three rounds, um, probably fast track to the big leagues. You know, um, I think it's a lot easier to see Andrew Jones in the big leagues because of where his body is right now for how for his frame and what he's able to do athletically he's not even fully developed yet. He's just beginning to scratch the surface. Where Malcolm Moore, he already kind of looks like a grown man, you know, so you can kind of, like, you don't know how much more uh, he's going to put on there. No but, I mean, for where he, yeah, for where he is right now, yeah, every team would want him on on their minor league roster somewhere. Yeah. So um, that was so cool, man. Yeah, it, it, it was it was awesome. Um, everyone definitely showed it up. Showed up. Um, and just the demeanor. You know, the yep. demeanor of how these guys can change their swing and, you know, yeah. aim for the fences. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Go for it, dude. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Um, so that was cool. But 
Yeah. Um, all, the home run derby was a success. Uh, Andrew Jones Jr. got to uh, – he won it. Yeah, congrats um, to him, man. Great very, show. Yeah, out. Very, very, very well um, – great performance all around for everybody. Yeah, with the DJs. Good times, man. That was yeah, fun, so, dude. So something – okay, now let's talk like culturally, right? Yeah. You, you know culture is a big thing and, and, and what I love doing, what you love doing. Mm-hmm. This was just different. Different, completely. This was a, that was different, you know. Um, it was obviously here in SoCal. Mm-hmm. It was ran by an organization in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. To me, Los Angeles is, you know, arguably one of the most cultural cities in in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and to have that 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 urban city uh, mm-hmm. feel, you know, mm-hmm. to what baseball I feel like isn't. That to me was amazing because, yeah, you know, absolutely, I, I, man. You know, um, I was actually talking to Dominic Smith and I, I said, you know, because he's from South Central LA and I'm from Myrna Valley, California. Shout out to Mobile, baby. <laughs> and I said, it's, you know, it, similar backgrounds, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of kids with no opportunities. And that's like the, the vibe I got. Yep. You know, and so we have that type of culture. Then we had a DJ playing. And, mm-hmm. and to me, that was cool, man. I don't know about you. I, I, I know you can relate, but most of the time when I'm on a baseball field, I think baseball is the reason why I love country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I know. If, you, if, if, you, <laughs> if you're not from the Midwest and you like country, it's because you play baseball. Like, yeah. You know, like you just have, there's so much country music going on all the time. Go play <laughs> on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, always. Making ground yeah. balls. That's normal baseball. Very normal. And there was DJ playing hip hop. Yeah, you're playing just like just just uh, updated songs for what you know what kids love today, and it just gave this yeah. really upbeat. Vibe, yeah, you know, um, and oh, then so much fun, man. Like this is like what this is the kind of vibe I think baseball should be headed to. It felt much more like the World Baseball Classic. Yep. Like you know, if you're playing Puerto Rico or Venezuela, it's gonna be Spanish music. Um, and there's going to be a celebration of where you're from. And this totally felt like a celebration, man. This is totally felt like, A, it's going. And it was so much fun to just be a part of that because it's just, you know, I, like we were saying earlier, country music is normal baseball. This was anything but normal. And it's just cool. And I really hope that this continues to catch on and we really start heading down this road where, you know, we're at like – and that's why I really wanted to emphasize this is not a travel ball team. This is not like a training academy. This is just an organization that is meant to like keep a community together and grow it like legit. Like this is a garden that where there are growing baseball players yeah. in their own way, very specific own way. And yeah. I'm just so thankful that we got a chance to, you know, be a part of it, man. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, next uh, level stuff. But I mean, there's so much. There's a lot of stories that I want to I want to talk about. Um, I don't know where to start. I got one for you. I thought it was pretty cool, man. Talk to me. So, so okay. So for those that don't know, I was kind of stationed the whole time. So I was on my camera. I really didn't move, but I was right by the first base dealt. And Jazz Chisenholm is the first base coach for Team Smith, where I'm standing. And he's standing on the top step, hanging out, and he's having a great time. And he starts talking. And then I, I don't know what they were talking about beforehand, but all I heard was, I didn't tell you the $200 story. And I'm like, what? Like, I didn't know who he was talking about, what they were talking about. And I, st- and I just it grabs my ears. So I start listening. And I was like, and he starts going down the story. So I didn't catch the beginning portion of it, but I caught the gist of it. I think he was getting harassed by a fan and he's like, you, you're no good. You can't hit a home run. And then he says, I'll bet you $200 right now. I hit a home run like in front of people, like in in front of everybody. So he goes, I'm going to tell this guy over here. So he knows to film me because I'm about to hit a home run this at bat. So for sure, first pitch, he swings and misses. He swings and misses. Second pitch, hanging splitter. He hits it out. And then, you know, like when you watch a baseball game and somebody pimps a home run, you kind of assume it's either like, look at me, or it's like there was an altercation between the pitcher and the hitter, especially if they get like really like animated about it. So he hits a home run in like a nothing situation. 
pimps it, starts yelling, that's $200, that's $200, pointing at the crowd and everybody on the, he was like, everybody on the field didn't know what was going on. Like, they were like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and, so, and then so he runs back, he's celebrating the whole way around the bases, comes back into the dugout, goes straight to his phone. The $200 was sitting in his Venmo and he hits accept as quick as he could. And he was like, that was like my favorite moment in the big leagues that year. Because it was just one of those things, dude. Like, was- how off- <laughs> it was like the modern day Babe Ruth calling a shot like hey film it on your iPhone and then send me a Venmo after so I thought that was just cool like dude if you get around big leaguers at all just shut up and let them talk because the stories that you'll hear are like you can't make them up so I just thought it was super cool to hear that coming out of his mouth especially you know like he's not the biggest guy in the world so for a guy like that to call a home run and actually get it rookie. shows you like, a rookie dude you know, yeah a rookie like dude He's super talented. He's going to be around for a while. He, um, was that recorded? That, that bet? Yeah. So he said, he said, I didn't get to see the video, but, uh, the guy he was talking to pulled up on his phone. If you just, if you just search, uh, jazz was at home. I told him I'd hit a home run on, I think it was a Twitter video up the guy who did it posted or the guy that he told to record it posted the video. And I think it went pretty viral, but yeah, I haven't got a chance to check it out. It is is it C H I? Um, I I mess that spelling up all the time. C H I S home. Yeah, C H I S H O L M. Jazz Chisholm and home man, and dude, uh, that guy is freaking two hundred dollar home run. I don't yeah, know. I think he said uh, I told him I hit a home run or something along those lines. Uh, but it is out there. The video is definitely up. A shot. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if anybody finds it, put the link in the description of this so we can watch yeah, it. Yeah, please send it over. I want to see that. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> actually, so that's that's actually a story I want to talk about is Jazz okay. uh, Chisholm. Yeah, what Chisholm. happened? Yeah. This guy is like pretending he's hitting, right? Mm-hmm. Like just like pretending he's hitting. And he's like, bro, you know who's a bad mother lover? <laughs> I'm like, who? He's like, DJ LeMayhew. Oh, yeah, he is. And I'm That's like, and he said, he said, I went up to him and be like, hey, this game's easy for you, huh? And DJ's like, no, it's not that easy because, you know, so and so, so and so. And Chaz got mad, not mad, but was like, he's like, bro, you know, he got mad because he's so good. And he's saying it's not yeah. that easy when Chaz is saying, Jazz is saying, Bro, you are amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so the story absolutely. was the story was like he said that every time they played him, he'd go two for three, three for three, one for three, just always just need always knock it. And the way he did it, yeah. you know, I'm a lefty, so I'm not gonna do it righty, but he'd always go, you know, his little bat tail. Yeah. yeah. Super simple. And yep. Jazz was like, bro, like. He, oh, you know, you're just going to throw the ball? Guess what? I'm going to put the, the bat on the ball. It just made it super easy, and it was just so funny yeah. now, the way he said it. And he said, even one time I was playing second base, yeah. and he's like, you know, I read, I read uh, pitches. I read swings, right? And he said that mm-hmm. on his pre-step, he's gonna, he'll, he'll, he'll pre-step, but land. So if anyone don't know, uh, doesn't know what pre-step is, it's like on the hop. So if, if you guys see, here's my feet, you go one, two on the hop and then read left or right. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's like you're getting ready for, for the, for a ball hit to you. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. one, two on the hop. And then, you know, d- uh, dust majority just go one, two jump. Right. Yeah, he had a big jump. Yeah. He had, he had like jump. a big one. Yeah. So he told me, he's like, bro, one time I did. So he's playing second, right? I'm, Freaking this reflection. He's playing <laughs> second and he did one, two, and he landed onto his left to cheat, assuming DJ would go oppo, hard oppo. Right? Oh, okay. I and haven't heard of that. Pre-step cheated to the left. Oh, wow. And he said that uh, he forgot who the pitcher was. All right, I forgot who the pitcher was, but the pitch was a hard fastball in on his hands. Oh, okay. So what do you think? What happened to a typical hitter of hard fastball in on the hands? Yeah, you're gonna get jammed up, you're gonna be late, and you're probably gonna jam exactly up right. Late. Maybe if you get around it, you could pull it hard, barrel it. Yep. He said DJ hard fastball or DJ DJ Lemay 
hard fastball in on the hands. DJ hands in, inside out, barreled it, hard ground ball to the uh, the three four hole. You know, between no persons way. and second, that he had no chance of fielding. No. Even him <laughs> cheating, he was right and he was still wrong. Right, he was still behind and yeah. he's still wrong. And he's like, bro, this dude does not, you know, get out. And that's how amazing it was. And it, it's, it's stories like that I love hearing because mm-hmm. all we hear is media and our own perspective and our own opinion. Yeah. But to hear an opinion from, a, not essentially, but from a big league player mm-hmm. to talk about someone, how amazing he is, that's like, that's cool insight, you know? That's a real review. That's a guy on the field actually seeing yep. it. And, you know, and similar positions, uh, you know, middle infield. Dude, DJ is one of, like, the most underrated players. You know, I see it every year my fantasy baseball drafts. Like, he's not going in the top rounds, even though he's winning, you know. I mean, does he? I think he has a, a batting title in each uh, league now, AL and NL. AL and NL, so, yep. Yeah, with the Rockies and with the Yankees. I'm like, dude, this guy is, like, criminally underrated. It's unbelievable. It's, but that's a pretty cool story, man, like, to, to have him say, like, I just respect that guy, especially since, you know, they, they're even though they play a similar position, one's righty, one's lefty. DJ's the much, you know, bigger guy overall. Jazz more kind of whippy and speedy. Yeah. Uh, so it's cool to see respect on that front. It, it, was, it was such an awesome story. Um, so yeah, that, like just like we said, if you talk to a big leader, just shut up, man. Yeah. You know, just yeah. because there, if you watch the game, you, you want to relate these, you know, players or these big leaguers and and hear insight stories. You know, mm-hmm. um, I always talk to this kind of off topic. I always talk to Chase Darnell, you know, former yep. uh, major league ball player, played for several teams. Uh, Giants is his latest. Actually, Rangers is the latest. He used to tell me stories about, you know, the Giants all the time. He used to tell, he used to tell me stories about Dustin Pedroia all the time, Mookie Betts and stuff. And he – one of my favorite stories, he does a really good um, – um, my chat's going to hate me for this one. What's uh, – um, oh, B- uh, Bochi. Bochi from the Giants. Yep. Yep. Really rest- – you know, that was – whoa, that was a terrible <laughs> impersonation. Whoa. Let's scratch that one. Really rest- – <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. raspy, deep voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, give me these stories about how Bochi would call him, you know, by his last name, Darno, you know, Darno. the flying Dutchman. The flying <laughs> du- there it is, there it is, the flying Dutchman, Jace Darno, you know, just very, just like that. And I love, it, you know, but anyways, I don't want to do any impersonations anymore. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that was cool. Jazz, a couple stories. Um, so I guess I guess we could move on to interviews now or talking yeah. to big leaders. Um, yeah, man. So we had a really cool one, man. I think that was super cool. So um, if you get a chance to check out the live stream, it's on BBG's website. There's a whole tab. It's on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a really cool interview that you got to do, and it was it was kind of like it was kind of low key because it was integrated into the stream, and you your interview was like the overlay audio of the game going on. So uh-huh. yeah, yeah, it was. So I could kind of Benji was running it, and I could kind of hear bits and pieces of it. So I got to go back and check it out. But how did it go? Uh, well, first the first interview I did, um, Adonis. So Adonis is what uh, one of the um, one of the owners, right? Owners of yep. Sideline. Yep. And he was like, bro, can you do an interview with Dominic Smith? I was like, yeah, sure. And to be honest, like, I wasn't prepared for it just because. Oh, I yeah, we threw you in there. Just yeah. Go. <laughs> so, and Dominic wasn't prepared either. So yeah. I asked him great questions. I asked him, you know, I asked him questions like, hey, uh, what's ways you give back? Uh, what are lessons you could learn or they could learn? What's something that uh, you see? You know, it was really short and simple mm-hmm. because – we were in a position where, no lie, we were like in front of the dugout standing and a right in the we're first base side of the, you know, first base side dugout with a righty up. These guys are throwing 95. A stop ball. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just not. You could have got smoked at any moment. Yeah, so I had to make it really quick. I was behind a net and you were completely exactly. exposed. And I was like, come on, bro. And then Dominic was like, bro, I'm sorry, man. Like, you know, that I, he, he felt like it wasn't like the best, right? Oh, just, dude, it was great. It was, yeah. it was perfect. And I was like, Dominic, it was, t- it, was, it, was, it was good. And he's like, no, 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 that was it. And uh-huh. I was like, man, I wish I, I, I could get more of this. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I get more if we're more comfortable. Mm-hmm. 
So I was like, yo, uh, yo, Dom, you mind if I get another interview? Let's make it more relaxed and let's kind of go more in the middle of the dugout. But, you know, in front, um, mm-hmm. I'll have my boy AJ behind. We'll get mic'd up. And then um, actually, I think Adonis heard it. Thank God. Because I, I didn't even tell Adonis, I, which I should have, but Adonis popped up his tripod and just boom, right, right next to us. I was like, that's dope. So I have an interview with Dominic Smith for about maybe 10 minutes, so more. Yeah. yeah. Leaning, against, leaning against the dugout and just chopping it up. And probably one of the biggest questions or the biggest things I, I, we talked about was he's like, man, you know, I had a rough childhood. I come from a rough city. Um, but – you know, to be able to be in a position that everyone dreams about, mm-hmm. you know, I really want to give these kids the cheat code. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, not the cheat, the cheat sheet. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's cool because, and I told him, I was like, Don, I mean, to be honest, like you are a big league ball player. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say to these kids, they're probably going to do it. Oh, yeah. If, if you say you eat steak every single day, they're probably going to do it. You know, whatever you say, you're, you're, it's so influential. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And, that, and that's, that's why. It's like, it's cool. So, you know, I can't wait. Again, go on either the website. What is it? Uh, BBG.com. Uh, BBG.com yep. to yep. check out the interview. Um, also, uh, probably the next week, I'll have it on my YouTube as well. YouTube.com forward slash the baseball. Just... Oh, I take it back. It's baseballgenerations.com. Baseballgenerations.com. Check out the interview. Um, but also, again, subscribe to youtube.com forward slash the baseball. Just check out the interviews. So it was really cool to kind of chop it up um, with Dominic Smith. It, um, very humble dude. Very just transparent. And it was a good experience, you know. And, and for him to say he's been league for, what, three years? Yeah, oh, I'm, look, I'm looking at his stats right now. Uh, 2020 was his fourth year. And uh, by the way, his average in his first season was 198. Then it went to 224, 282, and then now he hit 316. So if you're talking about somebody who's on the rise, uh, Dom Smith, like, especially with the Mets, like that team is getting better every year. And ownership just changed over too. So you could see a whole like, you know, another wave of uh, growth again. Yeah. Um, something that I do like that he said too is um, he's like, these kids need to know how to adjust. Mm-hmm. These kids know how to need to know how to adapt. And that could be anything. That could be the way you eat. That could be the way you work out, the way you, the way you um, hit your routines, your daily routines, whatever it is that you struggle at. He's like, well, what was his, uh, not this year, but last year, 2019 numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in 89 games, uh, he hit 282, 282 with uh, great, great. 11 home runs and 25 That's RBIs. That's a great year. What about this year? <laughs> okay, so check this out. So that was, in, that was basically 90 games last year. And this year, in 50 games, he hit one less home run, and he had uh, 42 RBIs instead of 25. So, and he and hit so, 316. Okay, so the past two years, he's been killing it. And, and killing it. every year he's progressing. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he's like, you know, that's what kind of changed my game is I started to learn how to adjust. Mm-hmm. I started to learn how to uh, listen to my body. I started to learn how to, how to prep and, and, and do what works. And I said, you know, that's a really good thing that, um, that I, I love hearing is a lot of people think, oh, Dom, you made it. There's no mm-hmm. need to adjust. You know what I mean? Like you made it, you know, it's a different perspective. Yep. No, because now, and I'm talking, you know, not that I know what it feels like, but I kind of just understand it is once you made it, you're not, you don't have that ticket to stay. Mm -mm. No, gosh. You are now keeping your job. Oh, absolutely. You know, kind of like that interview I had with Justin Turner. He's like, you know, like once you made it, people think you're done. No, it's like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a journey, you know, Justin Turner was a journeyman. Yeah, he was. You know? Um, so now with Dominic Smith, he's like, that's what kind of turned around for me is like, I understood that I had to adjust to get better. So, mm. yeah, enough about that, that, that interview. I, I want you guys to really watch it. So, yeah, that absolutely. was really cool. And then who else did you get to interview? Oh, you, got, you did JP Crawford as well, right? 
I kind of yeah. zoomed in. I was on the other side of the field. I didn't hear that one, so I yeah. zoomed in and saw you. J.P. Crawford, shortstop for the Seattle Mariners, just got a gold glove this year in 2020. It was really cool. It was really it was uh, a little shorter just because he had to rush to go coach third base. Oh, but gotcha. I had to say first off, I was like, dude, congrats on such a great year. That's 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 tough. That you know, for what you did, for you know, be a gold glover. That's huge. Um, and you know, then he gave me his gold glove award. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what do you get you do you actually get a gold glove like you could like hang no up? you get a gold glove the award you gotcha know? gotcha yeah yeah like the little casting of it right like yeah but you know correct me if i'm wrong if anyone knows this but i'm pretty sure if you are a gold glover and you are rawlings you have the gold patch the rawlings oh, gold patch oh that's pretty cool yeah so let me see oh yeah here hold on so see my rawlings right here Yep. The red patch. If you're a gold glover, I'm pretty sure you get a gold patch. Oh, that's sick. That's like uh, the NBA where you have the little tab on the back, like champion. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like a cool little flex. But um, yeah, I asked him uh, similar questions. What's your cheat sheet? What's something that you do? Probably one of my favorite questions is, um, I said, <clears throat> JP, you are one of, and I wish I knew the number. You're one of a thousand. What's, how many MLB players are there? Oh, man. Wow. Uh, well, if you say there's, what is there, 30 teams and everybody has a 28-man roster or 26-man so roster? Say 30 roster? times 30, that's 900. Yep, 900, less than 1,000. Oh, I said you're one of, uh, you know, hundreds. Mm -hmm. What makes you stand out? Mm. Right? And then I said, well, these guys are one of 40. What, make, what, what makes them stand out? You know, that, that type of yeah. question. Yeah, 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 really yeah. cool perspective. Really good answer. And – um it really makes you think, you know, whatever you do, you know, from what we do, what makes us stand out, what, for what these ballplayers do for it, it's, it's just a really cool professional answer. So BBG baseball generations.com check out the interview yeah. youtube.com forward slash the baseballogist. Um, and again, I asked him the same. I asked Dominic Smith was what's your cheat sheet, you know, and at the end of the day that, that really means is what do you want these kids or creators or workers or Ball players to know to be different or to uh, to 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 follow their dreams. So that was really awesome. That's awesome, man. What what a cool access, dude! Like, especially in a year where there was no baseball, to be able to to get in there and actually talk to people, see some high level baseball. But man, you just don't get to talk to big leaguers very often. Like, I've had very limited experience talking to big leaguers in the past. And this might have been equal to all of those times, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, when you make it to the big leagues, you did something right. Nobody makes it there by accident. Nobody uh, makes it there purely on talent alone. You have to be a very put together person. Yeah. Uh, you have to have immense physical ability paired with, you know, like Dom said, adaptability. And I think that's where a portion of the game gets too difficult to handle if you can't adapt with the times um there was a kid i saw there uh tyrese turner um he was a graduate of my high school as well and i, I had a good conversation with him after the event i was saying you know we've had, our high school had had so gar high school shout out uh has had so many draft picks so many division one players but we've only had a couple big leaguers and, you know, I think one of the common misconceptions is, like you said, when you get to that next level, it feels like you've made it. To be able to put together you know, not only adaptability, but growth, to be able to continue to get better, to never stop developing is a really hard thing to do. And it totally makes sense now that, you know, since Tyrese is hanging out with Dom all the time and they're putting in work together, that the, he's getting that ingrained into his brain, you know, because majority of coaches will talk about technical skills. They will talk about what your swing needs. They will talk about how your, your footwork is, how your um, body positioning is. But the idea of, you know, never stopping development, uh, how to adjust to different situations is such a big league thing. Like it just really is, man. So that's just cool to see that actually playing out to the kids he's reaching out to. Yeah. And, and it's, um, you know, I, I think being different is I'm so obsessed with that. You know, like mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. be a, a shortstop stud, but what makes you different? 
you could be a top 40, but what makes you different? You know, is it personality? Is it your swag? Is it, is it, um, your name? Is it your background? It, it just like, to me that, that I feel like it plays a part, you know, and something, you know, what I do really want to share, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to share my questions that I asked, uh, the, the kids oh, in, in the clubhouse. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get to see uh, it. So I haven't even, I don't even know these either. So, yeah. So here it is. I had three, four, I had five questions, but there's, there are tiers. So I did tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. Every okay. question's supposed to be different type of feel. Mm. One serious one, you know, quick. I, I try to like organize it as, like more than usual. It's really weird. Gotcha. <laughs> Color part and everything. Oh, no way. Oh, look at that. Dude. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I, I, I really want to make this interview good. So tier one, I ask questions like this. How old were you when you started playing baseball and who inspired you? Mm. It's one. I just want to know. I, I want to know about them. I want to know about them. You know, I want to know. know yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ken Griffey. Let's get it. <laughs> it, it and it's, um, it's things like that. Like it, it, it really defines you, you know, mm -hmm. another one is give me a childhood memory that inspired you to become the ball player today, mm. you know, and I shared stuff with them like, you know, um, like Matthew McConaughey center fielder for the angels in the outfield, by the way, if you guys didn't know that that's Matthew McConaughey center fielder and the scene, I, I I've shared this before the scene where there's a shot and Matthew's like booking it. And then the, the, that ball was going to land, you know, warning track and he was yeah. burnt and two angels picked him up and we're like ah, and, and he <laughs> and he caught it and then he looked at it and he's like bro what the and then they did replays they're like dude how'd you feel he's like i, I felt like i was flying you know <laughs> well the childhood memory of mine is i used to go to my couch and get a ball throw it and make that diving play into my couch like feeling i'm flying just kind of kind of stuck with me so, oh such a little kid thing to do I love yeah it. <laughs> so i'm not going to share the answers i got but i got great answers i got i got really good answers um so that those are my couple questions and then tier two i got uh this is probably one of my uh one of the questions that kids didn't think about it it was really weird what would be your walk-up song oh you're right people were saying like because they probably listen to on the way there yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah. I used to do the same thing like I, that would be like the last song i listened to in the car <laughs> or maybe like leaving the clubhouse i'd do that to myself get amped up it was the it was the go-to song to to amp you up that what that no one hesitated on that um one of the funniest answers was uh was actually termar <laughs> my favorite kid from the event <laughs> he said this he's like First off, did Future Future just had a new album, right? Was it Future? Uh, wrong guy, but I maybe I can Google it. I think it's Future. I think it's Future. I'll get it. Tell I, me, I, if Future I, just got a new album. Uh, yeah. Looks like there was one. Let's click it. Sure. Whatever. Okay. Yep. So Termo was like, I was like, what's what's your favorite song or walk up song? He's like, ah, oh, what's that walk up song? It's it's the last song in Future's last in Future's last album. We're like what? What? <laughs> so we, we spent like five minutes looking up the song. <laughs> All right, I got it right here. If if you talk about the one that came out in 2020, but it was earlier in the year, uh, the last track would be "Life Is Good," a remix featuring Drake, the baby, and little baby. Two different babies in there. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the one. Huh? Two different babies. Yeah. So it was just it was just funny to me because like. Like these guys know, like it defines them. So yeah, with all these answers I, I got, like my music. Yep. yep. And with all these answers I got, it's like you listen to these lyrics, you listen to the song, the title. It's like, oh, cool. That's what defined you. You know. Yeah. Um. Can we talk about Tamar for a second? That was my favorite guy of the whole Tamar, event, dude. Tamar. Let's go. Okay. First of all, the kid is the number one shortstop in the nation. So you would think that this kid's going to Vanderbilt, uh, you know, like some crazy high level, but he's uncommitted. 
because he is genuinely, at least the vibe I got, this is unconfirmed. I don't want to put rumors out there, but it feels like he's just taking his time with it. He's enjoying the process. It's like he knows he's going to take care of himself. And that kid was so, so comfortable in his own skin. I was envious because when I was his age, I was worried about, you know, what my teammates thought of me, uh, you know, like I was just too worried about the pimples on my face. Like I was so like worried about everything, but man, that kid was having a good time and he was genuine. Like he was so genuine and so talented. Um, he played all, like he literally played second, short and third. Um, and then we actually mic'd him up for an inning. Did you do know that? We uh, put yeah. a mic on him and in the live stream, you can see uh, a, a, like a couple snippets there. Uh, he would do this really funny thing where it was like a close strike three and the kid took it. He'd do this like, yeah. And like the like, it was a dead silent event. And the only voice you hear is Tamar over there. Just like, oh, got him. I should make a video for that. I'll make a video for him just because that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, you know, I just couldn't believe how put together of a kid he was. Uh, and he's, he's going to end up. So, I mean, he might not commit to a college because probably he'll get drafted so high he won't even need to think about it. But, you know, so, it might be one of those. But, yeah. So I got two things about Jamar. You know, first off, I, you know, great kid. I did an interview with him. Great, great answers. Great um, interactions. Uh, everyone was definitely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, gravitated to him. Yeah. Yeah, he had a pull about him. He yeah. definitely had a pull about him. Yeah, and um, it was really cool, really cool. But probably my two favorite things about Tamar that he did, right? Really small. Yeah. For me, uh, the small things is what really kind of stand out to me, right? Yeah, 5'8", 185. Strong 185, though. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's the two things that really stood out to me, okay? Let me break it down. Let me give you a little play-by-play. -play. I forgot who the leadoff hitter was for Dominic Smith's team, okay? But he um, – he got on, and then I think he walked. He walked. Then my boy Cameron Kim from Norco High School, 6'3", Korean. Mm -hmm. um, second it? pitch, just turns on it on a fastball, on a 94-95 fastball, hits a screamer 5-6 hole. Mm. So the leadoff hitter actually ran on that pitch, and on his, on his, when he was rounding second, kind of hesitated. Then he went to three. And he got thrown out. Oh, and yeah. Little play by play. And so Cameron Kim, um, then I forgot which pitch. I think it was like a 1-1 one, one count. A good, mm -hmm. a good count to run on, right? Assuming he's thrown off speed. He steals. And when he stole, Termar swings and misses on a fastball up. Like, it wasn't close to being a strike. Mm. Right. And then when did he say it? He's like, I, you know, I had to. Right. Oh, I did see him say that. He, he Is that, that. What, what did he mean by that? All right. So he swings it and then one, two, Cameron came safe. Um, and he's like, I had to, had to, had to. And for me, I was like, hmm, why do you have to? Because was it a hint run? Like what? What were the things of have to protecting him, mm, right? Maybe. Or yeah. or swing to get in the catcher's way something because oh, that's smart. You know, there's we don't know, right? And I just I I, I saw that, and then he eventually rolls over uh, to second or first, oh, actually to first, and then he comes in, and then he's like, bro, not, not nothing. That fastball is nothing. Fastball is really flat. Nothing, you know. And then with that fastball, that that second strike, I had to. Right. Um, he, he got a bad jump. So I had to, I was like, what did you just say? Whoa. <laughs> so for ball players or, or fans who don't know this, right. Oh, that's the reason ball why ball. I said, what I was questioning what he did, because sometimes when you have to, that is a, a hit and run where you have to swing. So you don't leave the guy hanging because most of the time you don't need a great jump for a hit and run. Most mm -hmm. of the time you just need to make sure he goes to the plate. So for hey, yeah, shout out to tomorrow, man. We're we're definitely you know this this stood out to me or stood out to us is he said he had to swing because Cameron got a bad jump. Dang. And I was like, what? This That's is a so much sixteen year old kid, and he just so said that. Absorbed. Oh my goodness. And yeah, 
that was wow pretty cool so that was one um so uh, thoughts on that before i talk about the other one first of all the dude he's facing is throwing like low mid 90s yeah sitting 92 probably dude are you kidding me so first of all he's trying anybody trying to hit low 90s is going to have a hard time doing it he's also getting a feel for the guy's jump at second in his peripherals because he's not looking directly at him it's kind of off to the side and he probably ain't um, know what he's doing and yeah man and that's what i'm talking about these kids have so much feel and i don't know if the game is elevated or maybe these kids are just way better than i was in high school but my goodness like this just feels like it's too much for where they're at in their lives they the game is just so high and, and and to have that 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 uh, label, he's the mm. number one shortstop for his class. Yeah, is it class or the? It's class. High it's it's okay. class. Oh, yeah. It's- so exactly. Yeah. So, because, um, every year, so you would. So if you see, um, like during the live stream, if somebody says like number one, we're assuming per class. class. Yeah. So it it's it's to have that 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 label of number one shortstop in his class which is 2022 Mm -hmm. yeah 2022 Mm -hmm. and to hear these things and see these things like wow like i'm not a scout but that's really impressive and you know i'm a i'm a baseball player slash coach to Mm -hmm. where and fan that i could that you even reacted like wow when i told you he swung to protect him because he had a bad jump wait so and this was this was with one out Right. right out. So the guy he protected the guy to get the third and then grounded out to second. So he got his RBI as well. No, he didn't get his RBI because okay, uh, okay. yeah, he didn't get his RBI. Okay, I was about to say that's just even better. Yeah, because the guy <laughs> at third got thrown out. Remember? Oh, that's right. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. So right. it I, I, again, that would have it would have been a good leader. Or yeah. I mean, even if like after tomorrow and and you have a guy and he pieces one and Cameron scores. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's the value what he did, you know? Yep. But so that was pretty cool. And again, to have that, that, that label and to see that stuff, you're like, Hmm, I wonder if scouts see this stuff, but damn, that was dope, you know? Yeah. So that's one, another one. I forgot who the pitchers were uh, again, like the pitchers, I thought they were phenomenal. Um, yeah, there's yeah. one guy that would just cane at people. Oh, oh, actually I know his name. Um, whoo, let me get your name. At the what end there? was the funky, uh, tall, white dude with long hair? Oh, that was to Spain, right? Where is it? Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, it was – what was his last name? To Spain. Hi. Dylan to Spain? Dylan. My boy, Dylan. Yeah, that dude, Dylan. That dude was a clown in the, in the clubhouse. Shout out to Dylan. It's Dylan right here. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yep. There he is. Yep. Yeah, that's my boy, Dylan. Dylan. Yep. <laughs> You, yeah, that dude is awesome. Hey He's man, can I, you mind if I take a picture with you, bro? Yeah, bro, let's do it. And then he he ran to his clubhouse or his his cubby. I was like, Dylan, let's do an interview. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was awesome. <laughs> Anyways, that dude is funky with his delivery funky in a great way, in a great, great way. way. Um, and had dirty stuff, right? Dude, his breaking ball was unreal. Dirt. Super Dirt. tight spin. Super Dirt. tight spin. And uh, Tamar, again, you know, speaking of Tamar, we're talking about Tamar's. This is the second thing that stood out to me with Tamar is um, I, forgot, I forgot the at-bat, but he struck out looking on his curveball. And, again, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to do the turnaround. I'm going to do what Tamar, uh, Tamar did. Oh, yeah, Tamar's a lefty, right? So. Hey, he was lefty. Okay. All right. I heard him say, oh, that was beautiful. That was, that was beautiful. beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Uh, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, you could either be embarrassed, you could be pissed off, you could be angry. But it takes a lot of a man or even a ball player or a baseball player to respect and tip your cap. That was basically a tip of the cap. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And that was it. <laughs> and the failure, the failure didn't rattle him. It did, and, and, and he was comfortable, like you know, admitting defeat. Because I mean, honestly, you're gonna fail seven out of ten times, anyways. So he was completely cool with it. And then his next at bat, he comes up because the I don't know if it was a shortened lineup or something, but man, it felt like the rosters were turning yeah. over like lightning. And then he had to face him again. I see him pull up, and he just goes, "Oh, I gotta 
face him again. And then he goes up there. He, I think he got out again, but he pieced it up. He didn't strike out again. He made sure of that. So, you know, respect to that. Though. That's it. You know, like you, you're facing, you know, one of the best pitchers in the country. And you're, all you got to say is, that was beautiful. That's awesome to me. <laughs> that was so cool, yeah. man. Shout out to Tamar Johnson. Tamar yeah. Johnson, right? Way to show out, man. So if you guys don't know what Tamar looked respect. like. Yep. That's Tamar right there. Absolutely, uh, man. About five eight, five nine. Really, uh, just athletic built. Uh, he's quick, great hands. He turned a double play. He's playing second. I don't know if you remember that. He's playing mm -hmm. second, and he turned double play, and it was. I mean, the shortstop receiving the ball is great. Fed him really well, but Tamar just go quick and smooth. I was like, damn, that was that was smooth. And you know, as an infielder, like yeah. you 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 kind of you put a little more praise to it, you know. Respect, man. So, man that's awesome. Yeah. So that that was a good name. Um uh what's another good name? You know, you know, uh, let's talk about Jones, man. Uh Drew Jones oh really really good really good personality, man. Um uh, really good mm -hmm. personality. Um just very What's word? There's a word I'm looking for. Presence, man. His Don't presence. Presence. His presence was there. It's known and it showed. Um, I mean, and then to top it all, to top it off with his 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 skill, you know that yeah. that's that, that's a all around package, you know. For where we are in the game, I think that there's this new wave going on where the sons of big leaguers are going to be a premium. Yep. Tatis, uh, Vlad Jr., Bichette. This is the next part of that wave. And he's just simply not old enough to be considered yet, but he is 100% going to be there. The kid's 6'3", and he flies, great defender. He's still not fully grown. He's going to keep getting bigger and strong. If you look at Tatis, Tatis still isn't fully grown. Tatis is going to put on 10 more pounds of muscle in the next two years, I promise, if not more. And he's still going to keep his quickness. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. So to see Andrew Jones and to see what his swing looks like now, I promise you he's going to develop at a crazy exponential rate from here on out. Yeah. Uh, because um, doing research for this event, I was kind of go, I was, you know, cause I was doing all those graphics. So I legit like looked at all of these kids videos. I could see back on when they were 14 years old and to see how he's grown from 14 to what is he now, you know, 16, 17 years old. Uh, dude, he is unreal. And if you look at his dad, his dad was a, a strong guy. Like, you know, he was still quick and athletic, but he was, he was a much thicker guy. Yeah. So you just know that that body's coming around for sure. Uh, yeah. but, but the presence, man, son of a big leaguer, it felt like, you know, it, it I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, the bloodline yeah. uh, because I think it applies in pretty much any other idea. You know, if you're talking about, um, if you're talking about race, uh, if you're talking about like racing horses, uh, all the ones that have won the triple crowns, they're, you know, more elite bloodlines. I think the same thing applies in baseball where, Hey, if my dad was a big leaguer and he passes his genes down to me, I should have some ability. And I think that 100% Andrew Jones Jr., is his father son? You know, one question I asked uh, Jones in the uh, in the locker room was, uh, you know, I said besides your dad, right? Because I mm -hmm. feel like that's just a God given thing that you got your dad, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as a as a mentor. It's like besides your dad, who's because he was in, he was always in the uh, the uh, the dugout, you know, as mm -hmm. a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And I said besides your dad, who's a, who's a ball player that you just you just learned a lot from. Mm. Can you guess? So it's the Braves. I wonder. <laughs> He's in other teams. Oh, oh, so different team. Mm -hmm. oh, I have no clue. Then I legit have no idea who. The Jones was also a Yankee. Oh, that's right. That's uh oh. Are you saying he said, Jeter? He said Derek Jeter. Oh my <laughs> gosh! It makes perfect sense. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, that, that's, that's why what, he's like. That's what he is. <laughs> that's what he's. Andrew Jones meets Derek Jeter's personality. Like, dude, this kid's gonna make it, man. So, so <laughs> being, like, being the son of like a, Andrew Jones wasn't enough. It's like, oh wait, he met Jeter. That's right. <laughs> Mixed in a splash of Derek Jeter, and now uh, you got the, you know probably gonna be a top ten pick in the draft. Oh, uh, cool. He's top ten for sure. He's first oh. for sure. He he talked to Derek Jeter. That is funny. But yeah, he. Oh, he's he's in. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so he was, you know, he just, he's like, man, you know, Derek Jeter, the way he led his team, the way his presence, his demeanor, his leadership, um, that's mm-hmm. one of the things that, you know, kind of stood out to him. And I was like, that's, that's cool because the reason why I like that answer is because, or that, that question is because when, they, when I say who's another person that reflects on you, I'll say, cool, this, this guy, this guy, this guy, this girl, why? And whatever they say is usually a reflection of who they are. Correct. Absolutely. You're not going to say, you know, you're not, you're not going to say, oh, he was so shy and so timid when you're outgoing. You know, it's like, yeah. it's usually what you resonate to, you know? Yep. But, the connection point. But yeah. So it was a really cool experience. Again, I can't wait to show you guys the interviews of those um, uh-huh. with those players, man. It was really nitty and gritty and really fun and just really exciting to, to you know, to have that. Well, well, while we're on the subject, sons of big leaguers. So we had Andrew Jones Jr., son of Andrew Jones, win the home run derby. The freaking MVP of the game was Karsten Sabathia. Sabathia. Off the bench. (laughs) Off the bench. Three for three with four RBIs. And I'm like, well, why wasn't he starting? That was like my first thought. And, dude, he showed out, man. What a cool – what a cool – come from New York – or from New Jersey, sorry. He flew out here. Uh, he's still not committed yet, but I mean, like, dude, like that, a show out like that is the reason why you come to these events. Because now he has on film three for three, four RBIs against top level competition. Like, I don't know if he's not committed yet because, or like, he has options. But yeah. like, dude, he helped his case. No he matter got a what lucky break too. I don't know if you, uh, if you're watching, but his first at bat, mm-hmm. and I remember I was like, damn, that sucks. Do you remember what happened mm-hmm. his first at bat? I think I do. Did he get hit by a pitch? Yeah, hit by a pitch, first pitch. Yeah, that sucks. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm in no position to say stay. You defer up to me, I'd be like, stay, bro. You know. So uh-huh. he ran to first, and then they're like, you know, yeah, get your bat. So then they, they put a runner on, and then announced. Well, you, know you know who told him to do that, right? Dominic. It was Dominic Smith. He yeah. was legit. Like, no. Oh, dude, no, come back because he understands the opportunity it, that's it, in front it, of him. Right now. Exactly. It's not a game to win. It, exactly. The game yeah, exactly. To These stats don't count. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, nice move because he came off the bench and it's what, the sixth inning? Fifth, fifth inning? Yeah, it was a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. Fifth and inning, middle of the game. Yeah, you're, yeah. You, you, you know, it's the opportunity. You flew all the way here. Not to just say what up to everybody, but also to show up. And you get first pitch walk, it's like, damn. So he ended up getting a, a, a single yeah, up the middle to, or to center field. I think he drove in two. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome. We went three for three. He was a first baseman. He actually had a scare. I don't know if you saw that either, but there was a pot fly, um, uh, foul territory, first base side. Uh-huh. And I didn't see this you know, sometimes there weren't any first base coaches or, or third base coaches that oh, one of the guys that. left their uh, shin guard on the, on the, on the, mm-hmm. uh, like coaches, like box. Yeah. Like where a coach would have been. Yep. Yeah. And he stepped on, it. I was like, Oh no, you know, like things like that. It's just like a no, no, you know, but he was, yeah, I think I just heard Dominic say to like, Oh, like my main goal is to make sure everybody stays healthy yep. because legit, like nobody's going to be in great, game shape like you might be lifting weights but sometimes lifting weights hurts you when you get onto the field for the first time you know because your muscles aren't used to exploding in unpredictable manners again you know so events like that that's literally like the worst case scenario because it's a stupid little evo shield sitting in the middle of the field like it's just an accident or shin guard what's that it's not an evo shield it's a 44 shin guard 44? Oh, yeah, that's right. They were sponsored. Yes, absolutely. Have some respect, bro. 44. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but actually, shout out to Dominic Smith because I did talk to Dominic Smith about um, keeping these kids healthy. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, like these pitchers, you know, they, they I'm not going to – and I, I overheard him coaching, and I, I put in the interview. I was like, hey, man, I do appreciate you, uh, you limiting these kids. I heard mm-hmm. that you're not uh, having these kids throw over 35 pitches an inning, mm-hmm. you know, no more than 50, like 55, 60 today. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's really, that's really responsible of you because, you know, uh, being a coach, every time you see a, you have a superstar or the best pitcher on 
coaches don't care. They just want to win the game. You know, Ryan yeah. Wars is a let win the game for me versus hey, let me shut you down to what seventy five pitch, depending yeah. what whatever age you are. You know, yep. for him to be responsible and limit these guys to thirty five pitches an inning, no more than sixty. That's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all these kids are probably the best player from their respective schools. So they're probably used to getting ridden pretty hard. They're used to all that. So, I mean, and that's not the point. Like, the point wasn't to win today. The point was to show your ability against other top-level competition. And you don't need more than two innings to do that if you're a pitcher. Like, no. you'll fa- like it's not like the bottom of the lineup is going to be substantially worse than the top. And once you get past the initial opening lineup – Dude, it's just a mix-up. Like, they're all really high-level kids. So, it was really cool to see that, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, it was unexpected, but Adonis also had me um, uh, interview Tony Todd. Tony Todd. So, I got, like, a very loose background on this guy. But who is Tony Todd? Like, I didn't understand at first, but apparently Tony Todd's a big deal. Okay. So, I, I've, I've seen Tony Todd – in the, in the past. And uh, Tony Todd to me was in my eyes, were just uh, a tops, like tops cards spokesman oh, and during oh, spring okay. training. Um, he actually handed like Mike Trout, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager, uh, a deck of cards to open and reveal whatever cards that they're revealing. I was like, this guy has a crazy cool job. That is so cool. actually I, I was talking to Bianca. I was like, Hey, that's Tony Todd. I really want to meet him, you know, but, I just didn't feel like I didn't have the opportunity. You know, I don't yeah, like yeah, to, yeah. just because you're here doesn't mean I could talk to you. Like I want to have an yeah. introduction and stuff. So Tony Todd is actually, um, he's an, uh, he's, a, he's an actor and he's oh, really, really, he's be really big and known for um, being on black Panther. Oh, he was a black Panther. Yeah. Oh, no way. He was a black Panther. No, I was kidding. Uh, he, <laughs> uh, he, he was on, he was in black Panther and he he's got a really good background with baseball. He used to play as well, but he he uh, watched a lot of Dodger games actually. You know, um, watched a lot of Dodger games. But he then, first off, well spoken dude. Mm-hmm. And you you know what really made me say that right off the bat is when um, Adonis mic'd him up, uh-huh. and then he was he was mic'd up and it was live, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then Tony was just saying some funny stuff. Uh-huh. And Adonis was like, dude, you're live. <laughs> you're live. And then Tony went from this to like, oh, and no, uh, we have uh, CC Zakia. He's now two for two. Now, here at 66 er Stadium here in San Bernardino, California, we have Dominic Smith and JP Crawford going head to head at the BBG All Star game. It's just super funny how he, he, <laughs> he just went perfectly. He flipped the switch on you. He flipped it. Yeah, but that was all out of you know oh. being, being funny, but um, yeah, I I asked him great questions, and then I, questions I asked him was uh, I asked him, hey, so what's your relation with uh, relationship with BBG, and um, what brings you here? And he's like, you know, I have a great relationship with Tim, and a great relationship with um, with uh, Ron, and you know, just being uh, close with the guys. It just it, it just it was a good connection. It was a, it was a very mutual con- uh, connection with him, baseball players people from Los Angeles. He, he's from Los Angeles as well. So that's what led him. Then also he, he shared with me um, what's to come. I don't know if we were supposed to know this. I don't, I, I didn't even know it was coming. He was saying that black Panther two is coming out. I was like, okay, that, I don't know if I, Oh, you're in alive here with the baseball. You know, I don't, I don't know if it, it was a big announcement. That was cool. Yeah. If um, he said it though. Yeah. Yeah. If he said it. So I, I mean, he said it, so it's cool. And just kind of catching up, um, you know. But what was really cool, though, is the interview went really well. Um, Benji even said that was probably one of the coolest interviews because it was very smooth. And the reason why is because, you know, not only with the interviewee, but with the interviewer, it's got to be really good just chemistry. And he had a really bright um, personality, and it showed. So I guess let me tell you about the post-interview, which I really loved, is um, out of nowhere – Tony was like, where are you from? I was like, I'm from Myrna Valley. 
He's like, oh, really? Filipino? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know how being from Rena Valley and being Filipino was like a thing, you know? <laughs> Just like that, those two yeah. combinations don't normally happen. Like, it's not yeah. like I said Cerritos or West Covina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cerritos, Filipino, what's up, dude? Yeah. Uh, uh, he's like, Filipino? I was like, yeah, full Filipino. He's like, man, I love chicken adobo. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I love it when that's the response to being yeah. Filipino. It's like, your food's awesome. I'm like, yeah. yes, I know. And and that was it for that conversation. And then oh, later yeah. on, I get in out just randomly. Tony's like, hey, man, where do you get your chicken adobo from? <laughs> mom. And I was like, my mom? He's like, oh, <laughs> man. I used to have, like, he's named uh, people in his life. Yeah. I used to have this and that. And they used to have chicken adobo. Man, I miss it. And I was like, man, you should go to like West Covina, Cerritos, like Filipino community uh, cities, especially in Los Angeles. You'll find it really well. Yeah. And then it just led to just conversations. We were, uh, it was the conversation started from when we're taking pictures of Andrew Jones, Sabathia, and the picture, the picture award, right? Oh yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the players of the game. Yeah. The player, the the awards of the games. And then we're walking to the uh, outfield, right, for them to take pictures. And then that's yeah, where the conversation amazing. happened. And I don't know how the conversation uh, started, but then he was like, man, did you see me as a bat boy for the Rangers last year or two years ago? I was like, what? no. Long story short, he knows the owner of the Rangers, and he thought it'd be funny if Tony came out and became the bat boy of uh, the Rangers. <laughs> Grown man is the man. Had this grown man wearing a BB jersey <laughs> with his name Tony in the back, and he, you know, just getting the uh, you know the the bats, and you know, he knows people in the MLB, and their uh, Rangers were playing um, 2018, 2019. Alex Cora was the manager of 2019, correct for um, Red Sox. The Red Sox. Yep. 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 Those Rangers Red Sox, and Alex Cora was like. Tony, what are you, you know, just like, what are you doing here? You know, so he, he just thought it was a big, uh, it was, he, he just thought it was super funny. I got to show it now. Um, oh, and he showed me the pictures. He posts on, he posts on Instagram too. Um, Tony Todd. So he showed me that. Let me, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Super funny. So Tony Todd's a big deal, man. I, I, big deal, that was my introduction to the Tony Todd experience. And the one thing I could tell was like, dude, this guy's like the life of the party everywhere you go. Because he's, I mean, he just was a fun guy. He definitely knew how to hold a conversation. He definitely knew how to liven things up. And I did hear parts of that interview. And man, that was like a fun one. Yeah, he, yeah. He could carry it, man. He could carry it all the way home. Exactly. Here, let me show you. I don't know if he, he, didn't, he never posted of him as the bad boy, but he does have a picture of his jersey which is good enough. Let's see. Here it is right here. Oh, he did. <laughs> Grown man. Grown man is the bat boy. Oh, my gosh. Look at him. How funny is that? Oh, my gosh. He's sharing that. And then, you know what? Like, And that's where he kind of like just got interested in what I did. He's like, hey, man, so what do you do? And I said, hey, man, like – I'm the baseballologist. I started this whole journey three years ago, and I call myself the first professional baseball fan. And the reason why this came up is because he, th this is where things kind of like how I got to know more is that he loves baseball. So then he was actually in the movie Little Big Leagues. Oh, no way. Yeah, he was in the movie Little Big Leagues. And he said, Well, I want to be around the game. Why not be around the game, but in like film so I don't have to get hurt because he got hurt in, uh, when he played? Oh, no way. Right. So he's like, why not extend my career in baseball, but in like film? So that's how he got a spot in Little Big Leagues, uh, the movie. If you guys haven't seen that movie, you guys should watch the movie. And um, that's how he got like acting stuff. So that's his like role in ba or That's how like baseball tied. And then I was like, well, this is what I do in baseballologists. And then I told him what's to come, right? You know what's to come. Mm -hmm. And he's like, man, that is cool. That's awesome. And then he kind of just kind of directed me saying, well, what do you need? And I just kind of just had these, these, these ideas and I had these, you know, just thoughts. And he's like, well, then he, he showed me some connections. I'll tell you, you know, he showed me connections. He, he's like, 
you have my number? I was like, Tony, I just met you. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then he gave me his number and um, he's like, anytime, man. And then uh, I, this is the cool thing to me. Was, oh. He's like, who do you need? I, I named some brands, right? He's like, what? This brand? Yeah. He's like, check this out. Boom, boom, boom. Go to his uh, phone book. And he and shows me the owner of this, you know, this uh, brand, big time brand. He's like, check this out. Boom. And he calls him. I'm like, hey, Tony. Like, and it's like five o'clock our time. Yeah. And I was well, like, it's Tony, it's, it, it's like, it's like three, eight o'clock over there. He's like, yeah. ah, he'll answer. And all you hear is, hey, Tony, I'm at dinner right now. You mind if I call you back right after? Tony says, yeah, yeah, no problem. Just don't have too many drinks. Have fun. You know, you know, something like that. And I was like, damn, you really just called the CEO of this company. Like that was that that to me, first off, it was a great story. But to me, it was like a it was an honor to be able to be, you know, cool enough or whatever you want to say, or you know, yeah. a humbling experience or a humbling feeling for him to call that number just for me. On your behalf. On yeah. my behalf. Like, you know, I'm very appreciative of of what people do or 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 yeah, do for me. And that was, he didn't need to do that. I didn't ask him to. So he gave me his number. He told me, hit me up anytime. Um, he even texted me last night, say it was a pleasure. And I, and I was going to wait till today. Cause I don't like texting the night right, of right, just right. like, Hey, yeah, he yeah. doesn't want to just chill out. You know, Yeah. he texted me, um, last, last night. Great meeting you brother. And, um, he says, I, I looked at your Instagram. You went to the world series. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I said, yeah, he's like, I went to the world series too. And he, he uh, sent me his experience. So Tony Todd, great name, great oh, connection. Man. And you know, I guess the moral of the story for what I'm trying to say is like, I love, I love networking in the baseball community. Mm-hmm. I love networking when it comes to people, whether it's music or films or movies or anything, because at the end of the day, it's like, I just want to grow as, as the person I want to be and to have these opportunities. Like that was, that was awesome to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Dude, that's so cool. I mean, and that's the spirit of the event, right? It's like Tony, I didn't know who Tony Todd was, but Tony Todd literally pulled his phone out and was willing to help you by any means for what you, your vision was. And that just felt like what everybody who was at that, you know, had made it was trying to give back to everybody. Like, Hey dude, we've experienced stuff. We've done things. How can I help you reach your dreams? And yeah. that's just the spirit of the event. And like, that's why I genuinely like, I don't know if another event like this exists in the world, but this is the only one I can go off of. And it's a great idea and a very humbling, like you said, experience. Very humbling, man. Um, yeah, there's so many people there. There's so many connections and to be able to be put in a position or a platform where not only was I invited Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, yeah. Sideline Media. Thank you, BBG. Thank you, Tim and Ron. Yeah, Tim but and Ron, man. Also, to not only be invited to be in the stands, but to be mm-hmm. sidelined, no pun intended, <laughs> to be sidelined and to hang out in these dugouts, to hang out. You know, I, I, I don't know if you heard that announcement right, before, right after the All-Star game or the Home Run Derby. Anyone not a coach or player or video, please exit. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's probably me. But then yeah, I, is. then I just went down. And I, I, you know, Tim, Tim and Ron definitely made me feel comfortable, and it made me feel um, comfortable to create. And that's all I want to do is I want the opportunity to create and do my thing and have free range and and really expose product, services, companies, players in the best way possible. You know. Yeah, man. So it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that, that's, the, that's the big event that they have. That's their main event for the year. So uh, obviously we'll want to do it again next year. But, man, I hope they do something in between. You know, I think uh, last year they had like a, a skills camp for the kids. So for the younger kids, like basically like a, hey, you know, like a, another form of community outreach where they're helping the youngest generation. This was like, you know, obviously the older group of kids. But, um, dude, I just, I just want to see them grow, man. I think they're yeah. onto something. I think they got a very cool, you know, unique group of guys that can really elevate anybody they come in contact with. So I'm happy for them. Uh, one quick there. shout out. I, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna end this, but I got to do one quick shout out. All right, first off, shout out to Sideline Media. You gotta go. You guys have to follow them. It's yeah. the Sideline Media. The Sideline Media on Instagram. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. We're slowly building that, man. man. Um, but another one I got to give a lot of props to is my boy AJ. 
AJ killed it. AJ uh, Hernandez uh, was um, the primary videographer because Ryan was, you know, busy doing sideline stuff. So I had to bring another camera guy out. And um, AJ is a trooper, bro. Um, what what he did? So he works graveyards. I think he starts at work at 10 p.m. I think as we said, yeah. And so I just assume eight hours. So that's till six, right? <sighs> And the night, so today is Sunday. So Friday night, he goes to work at 10, does his eight hours, gets off at six. Then from six, he drove all the way. He drove from Los Angeles to San Bernardino straight up. And he got there around, what, 8.30? Yeah, we were there Friday, early. And he didn't sleep. Usually he, he sleeps around that time. He didn't sleep. And then around like, probably three or so three or four i noticed like man he's like you could start seeing it right yeah and then in between i was like bro aj get some rest bro get some rest and he says like yeah cool cool thanks and he he tried to take a nap and stuff and i was like man like this guy's really doing this right now so around like i don't know like four or five i was like bro aj go home and go to sleep he's like no i'm gonna go straight to work i was like wait what you're working after this he's like yeah i work at 10 I was like, bro, you, you, you're not sleep. What? Like, I, I wanted to do the math of not sleeping and, and yeah. you know, oh so he, have we checked on him. Is he okay? He's okay. He texted okay. me, you know, so he, he literally, here's a text. This is how much of a trooper AJ is. He, um, 6 27 PM yesterday. Hey bro, just got home safe. Thanks again for everything. And uh, I was so tired. I didn't even look at my phone. So this morning I said, bro, I'm glad you got home safe. I hope you got some sleep. Thank you for everything yesterday, man. I had a blast. Shoot me a call later today after you wake up. Much love. Yeah. And then 12, 13 today, this afternoon, right? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't respond to my text. He just says, I'm going to work on a short little video today for the game. And bro, let me tell you, it's going to be so sick. <laughs> Dude, what a guy. What a legend, man. So what shout out to um, shout out to AJ. You guys have to follow him, please. And, you know, I don't know if he listens to the podcast or not, but give him a follow on his Instagram. It's called The Nest Film Co. So like nest, like bird's nest. So The Nest Film Co. With, you know, C-O. Give him a yeah. follow and give him a... a uh, a comment saying you're a trooper, you know, something like that. Yeah. The community uh, loves you something um, because, you know, he's, uh, he's definitely gonna be around, you know, helping create with, uh, with Ryan, myself and the team. So I'm super excited about that. So shout out to AJ Thanks, brother. Man. Great job, AJ, man. What, a, what, honestly, like it was, it was chaos. If we're honest from your end, from my end, especially yesterday was chaos but it was like the best kind because it was exhilarating. It felt like it felt new and it felt like we're headed down a road of something kind of different and unique. And I think that there's a lot that we could do within this realm. Oh yes, yes, yes. And and, Um, I mean, speaking of a lot to do, um, I remember Benji. So again, shout out to the sideline media. Benji was like, bro, Ryan, we're three guys doing a 10 man job. And I was like, these guys are hustling. <laughs> you know, again, I, I have nothing to do with sideline. Like I, I just did interviews. I, I didn't do any like film stuff, but, yeah. and I don't know how to do that, but for Benji to be like, bro, Ryan and Adonis, we're doing a 10 man job. I'm like, that's cool. You know, it really should. I, I, I really, I appreciate those guys so much because that, that stream would not have gone up if it wasn't for them. So thank you guys. I appreciate it you and man I, I just know i just know that the all of these are going to come together like what we're doing in the live stream is going to affect we do baseball this with aj coming in is going to add some fresh new life so teams kind of we're, we're building some stuff man and, and we're going to bring out some new cool content man and i think it's going to be it's going to be fun for everybody it's it's in the making baby the making. and it's um again I think every time we the like last last uh, podcast we kind of like talk about what's to come and mm-hmm. I don't want to state I just want to do so whatever yep. you see that's coming is kind of it coming yeah but Absolutely. when you start seeing you know things happen more consistently but in a in a different level mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh man.
It's fine. All right. I feel good now. I feel like we got it. We got it. We recapped it, man. That was a great event. And, and I think we've said all of our, our favorite parts. So yeah, mm-hmm. man, you got anything else? Um, do you think Snell should have been pulled out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you guys listened to the last episode, freaking, we had this great world series yeah. conversation about my experience uh, at Texas and oh, anything else. Uh, then Ryan asked me, do you think Snell should have been taken out? Like, come on, bro. You, you had to take out 10 minutes out of my time to talk about that. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. no, but um, you know what? It, it was good. It was a, uh, it was a great, it was a great event well put together and did you cover last year or no i i was there but i was that was when i was still working for marucci so i was actually selling fats the last time i went to this event so So i I actually got to see more this time around than i did last time so uh opinions i got was it's such a big step up this year from big time from from the amount of players to the um the professional presence and Mm -hmm. my biggest thing was the media coverage Mm-hmm. Right, there was like a lot told, going on. Yep, just like what I told you is like in between the innings, all years. Whoa, look at Ryan flying that thing. You know, like <laughs> what are we doing here? Making a movie? Yeah, but yeah. it was it was cool. So um, again, I can't I can't wait for next year. Uh, God willing, I get invited again. Oh yeah. Uh, hopefully, so cool. I covered it well, and hopefully, I I uh, represented well. But that's that's my job is I just want to showcase the ins and outs of the game, and that's and yesterday was the BBG. So, shout out to BBG. Oh, yeah, man. Thanks, to the players. Thanks, Braun. Thanks, Damo. Thanks, JP. Yeah, sure. and, and, my mom. My dad. Shout out to Bianca. Shout out to Bianca. She's a trooper. <laughs> hey, but shout Bianca out to Bianca. killed it, man. She's a trooper with the, with the stories. If you guys, uh, if you guys uh, see that, um, that's, that's Bianca. So, yeah, shout out to her. But, yeah, you know, it's... it's um, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm, there's something. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm very happy with the event because that is everything I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it's cool because like with what you love doing and the mixture of things, it would just, it was such a great event. And that is like what the videos you'll see is going to be a, a a taste of what's to come. How about that? That's a really good Mm -hmm. way to kind of close it up. Yep. Yep. You see, it, uh, what you're going to see in this, uh, the upcoming videos, whether it's the interviews, YouTube, youtube.com forward slash the baseballologist is what's to come. So be excited, be prepared. Thank you guys so much for, you know, just the support and for you guys listening, but uh, any last words? No, that's it, man. I think we got it. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to, to keep on going down this road and until next time, man, appreciate you. Great job. Uh, Lastly, I do have a lot of people reaching out mm-hmm. saying, I'm glad that the podcast is back. I'm oh, glad nice. you and Ryan are coming back. And, and it's not even kids. It's like adults. Oh, and nice. it, it, it's, it's cool to hear that because we, we love the kid uh, fan base. But to say that adults and teenagers are listening to us, it kind of shows us the, the range of the community. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm just happy to be back and I'm happy to recap on things. And this is what we want to do is we want to hit on different events and, and showcase different experiences and recap and review and talk about it. So yeah. we appreciate the support and till next time. Appreciate you guys. Peace. My man. Bye. Let up. <laughs>